the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, nuns, and our beloved faithfuls, the congregation, who are present here with us in this holy church of St. Shimon Bar Sabaya and St. Mary's Cathedral, and those who are watching us through live streaming, may the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life and forevermore. Amen. We thank our loving Lord Jesus. We thank Him for His infinite love, for His infinite mercy, for His infinite sacrifice, for His infinite humility, for His infinite perfection. We thank Him for being Jesus Christ of Nazareth because this person alone, without saying anything or doing anything, alone is more than enough to thank Him for eternities to come. Amen. Can't hear you. Amen. That's a good one. Very good. The gospel of today is according to St. Luke. And the church, our church fathers have taken parts from chapter 16 and also chapter 17 of St. Luke. More specifically, it is chapter 16 from verses 16 to 31, which is the end of the chapter, and then chapter 17 from verses 1 to 10 inclusive. The Lord is giving us a parable. It is a parable of a rich man and a poor man called Lazarus. When we look at the Gospel of St. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which are referred to as the Synoptic Gospels, meaning there are similar narratives there shared between the Gospel writers, Synoptic Gospel. We see the Lord Jesus has spoken so many parables between the Gospel of St. Mark, St. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. However, this particular parable, out of all the other parables the Lord had said, this is not just a parable, but it's an actual story, an actual event, an actual per people that actually lived on the face of this earth in Israel at that time. And the reason being, because the Lord mentions a name of a person called Lazarus. The Lord Jesus is God revealed in the flesh. He doesn't make up stories. He doesn't create names unless there was somebody called Lazarus and he was poor. Because an actual parable is comparing one thing with another thing in order to try and make the message as clear, as easy as possible to the listeners. But here there is no comparison. It's an actual event, actual people. And he was, na he was named Lazarus. What happens? This rich man, he lived lavishly all his life. Every single day he was dressed up in purple and linen, royalty. He was very rich, very wealthy. He could have done anything and everything and he enjoyed life to the fullest as so many people of the world do so. And the poor Lazarus, he was thrown at the gate of this rich man trying to eat the crumbs that fell from the table of this rich man and he wouldn't even get those crumbs. He was full of sores. And on top of that, the dogs came and licked those sores as well. He lived in a very difficult, painful life. They both died. The rich man died and was buried, but the poor Lazarus died and he was carried by the angels to the bosoms of our father Abraham. And then this rich man saw himself burning in Hades. And he looked up and he saw Lazarus 
enjoying the presence of his father Abraham and he cried out to father Abraham he said father please send Lazarus I am dying from thirst I'm burning tell him with his little tiny finger to bring me a drop of water I am thirsty to death father Abraham replied and said to this rich man he said remember you had your good share of life on earth you lived so to the fullest of it now you need to suffer and Paul Lazarus he lived his life all in pain and sorrows and difficulties and trials and tribulations now it is time for him to rest and secondly there is a big valley we can't neither us crossing over to you nor you crossing over to us. The rich man said to our father Abraham, okay, if you cannot send Lazarus to me, then at least send him to my five brothers who are still on earth to go and warn them not to come and end up where I am, burning in Hades. He said, the father Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. He said, but father, it is not like, it's not the same when somebody comes back from the dead. It is much more powerful. They will adhere more. They will be obedient more because this person was dead and now is back to the living. So they will listen to him more. Father Abraham said, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will neither listen to the person who comes back from the dead. There was a certain rich man. Let's define what the gospel writer or the Lord Jesus is trying to send this profound message to all of us. Who is this rich man? And why is this rich man rejected by God? Why he could not make it to the father Abraham's bosom? Why did he end up in Hades? Who is this rich man? I'll read you this passage from the book of Revelation and chapter 3 verse 14. This is the Lord Jesus speaking to one of the leaders of the seven churches in Asia. Revelation 3.14. Listen to this, please. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot I could wish you were cold or hot so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say listen to this verse 17 because you say I am rich the gospel of today begins with there was a certain rich man the Lord is saying, because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy and have no need of nothing and do not know and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. Wow. You say, I am rich, but I, the Lord Jesus, who is God revealed in the flesh, I say to you, you are nothing but a piece of wreck, a miserable one, a poor one, a blind one, and let's add a naked one as well. So who is this rich man that is wretched, poor, blind, naked? Who is this rich man? You are neither hot nor cold.
the Lord is not talking about people who are rich in materialistic things because if the Lord is saying to whoever is rich with materialism is not going to make it to heaven then the question arises where did this materialistic things come from didn't it come from God in the first place then why would God give you wealth and then say you cannot now enter the kingdom of God because you're wealthy you're rich no the Lord is not talking about people having wealth money possessions properties you name it he's not talking about this the Lord is saying the one who will not make it into my kingdom is the person who says I am rich in my own eyes not in God's I am rich in my own eyes not in God's in my own ways not in God's ways in other words it is the person who says me 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 and no one else the Lord is the one who gives wealth but when the Lord blesses you with wealth do you give it all back to him or do you say I've done it when you have possessions when you have a lot of materialistic things when you have millions and billions and trillions of money in the bank account do you say I did all this I have created my wealth with my own strength or do you give that credit back to the Almighty God who created you and gave you everything if it wasn't for God where would you have been when you say I am rich in my own ways outside of God God will say I do not know who you are at the end remember when you are able to go to work remember God gave you this health God gave you this capability God gave you this breath of life to enable you to go to work when you were able to build a house God gave you the intellect to do so when you were able to achieve whatever you were able to achieve remember it is God's work no one else's are you acknowledging God's graces in your life or are you saying I've done it like the world says all the time look at the world they are boastful about their medical advancement scientific advancement they are so proud of so many achievements at a human level which this achievement made them come to this level where they are denying the very existence of the Almighty God. So all their achievements led them to absolute ignorance. They are nothing but a piece of wreck. They are nothing but blind, naked, and poor. Even if they have all the money of the world and all the treasures of the world, they are poor. You know why? Because the moment the spirit leaves the body, they will take absolutely nothing with them. They will leave very poor and they will leave naked because unless Christ dresses you up, we are all naked. Unless Christ covers our nakedness with his righteousness, we're all naked. Unless Christ opened my eyes, we are all blind. Unless Christ cleanses me with his precious blood, we are all a piece of wreck. Unless Christ fills me with his wealth, I am poor. The Lord is saying, I want you to be rich in me. 
and pour for yourself. Lazarus was rich in God, but in the eyes of the world, they saw him a poor man. Isn't it always the case? Isn't it always the case? Look at this poor person. They've been going to church for years. What happened to them? They go through a lot of trials, a lot of difficulties, a lot of tribulations. They look at them, they're suffering. Come on, wake up to yourself. Why do you keep on going to church and keep on suffering? You only live once, my dear friend. How about you come with me downtown, brother? How about we put the Sabufa Habibi in the back seat and we say this for Sharbel, wa'a wa'a dov dov. How about we enjoy life? You only live once, mate. Uh, somebody said, don't, don't mention the word mate. This doesn't, it doesn't, um, doesn't mean very good things there. Anyway, so buddy. Come on, buddy. Let's go and have fun. Let's go and have fun. You only live once. Enjoy it. The only person you care about is yourself. The only person you look at is yourself. The only person you really give your time for is yourself. Don't be troubled by others. Who cares about others? Let them all fade away and fall away. As long as I live, I am in control. I don't care about no one. This is the person who is rich in his own eyes, rejected by the eyes of God. Rejected. God never created you to be selfish. God never created you to gather wealth for yourself only. God created you for Him and for people around you. For Him and for people that He has placed in your path, in your life. A rich person is an egocentric, selfish, greedy person. This kind of richness is rejected by God. Is rejected. But look at Lazarus. He lived a life of pain, of sorrow, of hurt. You know, when you follow the Lord Jesus, what's going to happen? You will be filled with sores. What are sores? Pains, hardships, trials, tribulations, and dogs licking those sores. Dogs here represent people trying to defamate your character. Character defamation is dogs licking those sores. Dog, what do dogs do? They always bark. They always bark at people passing by. People will talk about you. Barking is talking. They will try to sweep the floor with you. They will try to persecute you with their words, with their plans, with their plots, whatever way they will try to bring you down and give you nothing but pain. Why? Because you are rich in the Lord Jesus and whoever receives the Lord is rejected by the world. Hated by the world. And the Lord said it. Remember, if you say the world hates you, remember they've hated me before you. Look what they've done to the green branch. What, are they, what do you think they will do to, your, to this dry branch who is us? The green branch is the Lord. If they've done this to the righteous one, what do you think they'll do to the sinner like me? They will decimate me. I'll be kicked, punched, ridiculed, left, right, and center. The moment I say, I belong to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But 
By the grace of the Lord, you last till the end. You stand firm, you stand strong. You'll end up in the bosoms of Abraham. Abraham. In the original language, Hebrew slash Aramaic Syriac, because you see, Hebrew, Aramaic, Arabic, they're all Semitic languages. Same. The name originally was made out of four letters. See, when you translate into other languages, you lose kind of some sort of a meaning of it. But the name in Hebrew or Aramaic, Syriac, is made out of, originally out of four letters. Abram. Alab A, equivalent of A, Beth B, Resh R, Mim M, Abram. That was the name, Abram. When the Lord God spoke to A Abram in Babel of Iraq, Mesopotamia, Middle East, where I come from, it's a great country. But the world is not leaving my country alone. The ugly politics of the Western world. Abram. When the Lord spoke to Abram, he said, come, leave your family, leave your homeland and come, I'll show you the promised land. When Abram followed the voice of God, God added another letter to his name, which is He equivalent of H or H, whichever way you pronounce the letter. Aussie way H, British, American H, H. God Aussie H. So God added another letter, H, became Abraham, Abraham. Aleb, A, for God the Father. Beth, B, God the Son, Brona. Resh, Rucha, Tkutcha, God the Holy Spirit. So Aleb, for God the Father. Beth, for God the Son. Resh, for God the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God in nature, one God in essence, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Mim. And God added the letter H or He for Heimanuta. Heimanuta means believe, faith. Because, Ad uh, because Abraham listened to God's voice, he believed in God's voice, became the faithful Abraham, the father of faith, as St. Paul puts it in his epistle to the Hebrews. Chapter 11, the father of faith. And Mim Ma'modita, holy baptism. When you and I and all of us believe in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God in nature, one God in essence, when we believe, we receive baptism through faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. When you accept trials, tribulations, hardships, pains, struggles, when you carry the cross for the Lord Jesus on earth, you will end up in the bosom of your heavenly Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity will embrace you in the end because you are the faithful one baptized in their name. You will end up with the Almighty God at the end. But look at the rich man. Here is something for those who say, when somebody dies, that's it. They get disconnected. They don't see us. They don't hear us. They don't pray for us. Well, here's an answer for you, my dear friend. This rich man, where did he end up? In Hades, burning. 
meaning he was separated from the Almighty God. The, the true death is when the spirit separates from God. When the spirit separates from the flesh, this is only transition, departure. This is not death. When the spirit leaves the body, you only depart from the temporal realm into the eternal realm. That's all it is. There is no death. But the true biblical spiritual death is when the spirit departs from God, separates from God. This man, this rich man, his spirit separated from the Almighty God. You can say to this man, he was truly dead. Was he dead? No. In fact, he was praying and interceding. Re recognizing Abraham, recognizing Lazarus, he is dead, he is separated from God, he should not be talking at all, he should come to a full halt, no thinking, no nothing, absolutely nothing. But no, even though he was in Hades burning, separated from God, he still recognized Abraham and he called him father. And he recognized Lazarus who was cast at the front gate of his mansion on earth. He recognized him. Wow. And not only that, more so, he interceded for his five brothers on earth. Wow. Interceded for his five brothers on earth. My question to those who say there is no intercession of saints. If someone who ended up in Hades, a sinner, dead in the spirit, totally separated from the Lord Jesus. If this person, while in Hades, absolutely dead, interceded for his five brothers, how much more? The ones who are in paradise, in the presence of the Lord, saints of the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the living saints, how much more they will intercede for their brothers, the church on earth. Anybody home? Anybody home? The saints are dead. <laughs> Define death, my dear friend. Define death before you speak. And one piece of advice when somebody is listening to this bishop and they make a judgment out of something that the bishop had said in a very short, short, short time. If you're not sure, best thing is to call him, check before you speak. Check before you speak. The world there is no more caliber to it. There is no more weight. Everything became lightheaded. People quickly rush into conclusions. People quickly rush into decisions, into judgment without knowing the full truth. And even when the Holy Bible is being interpreted, so many people are acting like little kids, behaving like little kids. And what does a little kid do? Can't sit silent and quiet, jumps from one corner to the other, from one room to the other, from one wardrobe to the other from one drawer to the other. Sit down, relax, no, jumping. We need to be heavy. We have a saying in our language, we say a heavy rock stays and remains in its place, doesn't move. Why are you jumping from one place to the other? Be heavy, be firm. He interceded for his five brothers on earth. The question, how did he remember? 
How does he remember he's still got five brothers and he's burning in Hades? He's left the body, the spirit left God and went to Hades. You know why? Because he had with him something called the soul, S-O-U-L. And one of the components of the soul is called the subconscious mind. And what is the subconscious mind? The hard drive of your computer. The hard drive is a place where you store all your memories. So this man stored all the memory that he had on earth. And since the soul was with the spirit, therefore he had his memory with him because until the second coming comes, the spirit and the soul are together. That's why he remembers he has five brothers on earth and he was still interceding for them. How much more of the saints and the Holy Mother, the mother of all saints. Man, and, and you get upset when I talk about my mom? Well, get upset. With all love and respect, smack your head against the wall. Why are you getting upset? I want to talk about my mom. Why you get upset, brother? Relax. Be heavy. Don't jump. Don't run here and there and everywhere. If you only knew, my little child, how awesome is the Holy Mother? If you only knew, I feel sorry for you. And I'm saying it out of love. I'm saying it out of love and respect. And my concern for your well-being. If you only knew how awesome the Holy Mother is. And how awesome the saints are. Imagine a saint 1,700 years ago comes and says hello to you. 1,700 years ago. And somebody says the bishop doesn't know what the Holy Trinity is all about. He doesn't know that love is equal between the Father, the Son, and the, and the Holy Spirit. They're all one. Come on. When you misunderstand the bishop, don't jump and speak. I hope somebody's listening. Let me tell you one thing. When you go to the other side, whatever you say here is going to stop. Because what you will see, it will make your entire intelligence go absolute numb and will come to a full halt. So don't think that you know much. I'm afraid you may end up being knowing not much. Who is this rich man that is rejected by God? When you read in the book of Genesis, God created Adam and out of Adam Eve. They had the first two sons, the first one Cain, the second one Abel. Cain killed Abel. God, out of his love and mercy, gave Adam and Eve our parents our former parents, he gave him another child in the place of Abel called Sheth. The descendants of Sheth, the descendants of Sheth till the time of our father Jacob. Jacob is the son of Isaac, the grandson of Abraham. The descendants of Sheth till the time of Jacob, this lineage is referred to as the, the children of Elohim the lineage of Elohim, the sons of Elohim, or the sons of the Almighty God. And the daughters of men are the descendants of Cain. The daughters of men are the descendants of Cain. God 
warned, pre-warned the lineage of Shez, the sons of Elohim, of Elohim. He warned them and said to them, don't ever take for yourselves wives from the daughters of men, i.e. from the lineage of Cain, because your lineage is mine. You belong to Elohim. You belong to God. You do not belong to the condemned lineage of Cain. And who are the condemned lineage of Cain? The daughters of men. Who are the daughters of men? The world. The world. And then the Holy Bible says, Habib Albi, the sons of Elohim came and saw the daughters of men were good looking. She was a good looking girl, baby. And they took for themselves wives from the daughters of men. They gave birth to the giants. The sons of Elohim mixed with the daughters of men, they gave birth to the giant. Who is the giant? A giant is someone who is neither hot nor cold, lukewarm. If you're hot, meaning you're close to the Lord, you have strong faith. If you're cold, you're distant from the Lord, you're weak, you have a very weak, a very weak faith. But the Lord says, I wish you were either cold or hot. Would have been beautiful. Why? Because if you were hot, close to me, I am able to keep you with me, to sustain you and support you and make sure you stay with me. And if you were cold, distant from me, I, the Lord, can bring the sinner who is distant from me because when I died on the cross with my own precious blood, I purchased you all. I am the good shepherd who seeks the lost sheep and brings it back to the fold. If you're cold and distant, I can bring you back. However, when you are in between, when you mix the hot water with the cold water, it is no longer hot, no longer cold. It is lukewarm. It is destroyed. You cannot separate the hot now from the cold. It's ruined. Lukewarm is in the middle. Lukewarm is in the middle. The Lord says, I wish you are at my right hand, hot for your love for me and faith for me. But if you're cold, distant, I can bring you back. But don't ever stand in the middle because the only one who qualifies to stand in the middle is the good God, the judge of all. In our church tradition, structure, I'll give you a small piece of information. You see the stand? There's a cross on it. There's the Holy Cross on it. This stand here represents Christ. In our church, this stand here represents Christ. There is a bench there and there is another one here. This is what we call the former side and this is the latter side of Christ. Between the former, the first, and between the latter, the last, Christ stands in the middle. Now who is Christ? Christ is perfect God and perfect man Divinity, humanity united in the person of Christ. So what is the divinity of Christ? The former, the first side. This is the divinity. What is the latter side of Christ? Humanity, because divinity is much greater than humanity because the divine is the creator of the human side of Christ. So what is Christ as divine king? That's the right side. What is Christ, the latter side, humanity, priest? Christ, in his divinity, he is king. Christ, in his humanity, he is priest and the high priest, as St. Paul puts it. So Christ in the middle, the right hand is his kingship. The left hand is his priesthood. The Lord says, if you are lukewarm, you'll stand in the middle, you're standing in my way, I will vomit you out of my mouth. 
Don't ever stand in God's way. <laughs> what is standing in God's way? Challenging God. Who is a giant? A giant says, there is God, but I will challenge him. Let me see if he can stop me what I want to do. Like the people of the world. Aren't they saying this now? They're saying, we're God. There is no other God but us. iCloud is one God. Was that uh, Ferrero, wasn't it? Ferrero. Uh, eat Ferrero. It's good chocolate, Italian. I know, I know, Hereri. But you, sh you, should, you should be eating Ferrero better. When you walk away from the Lord Jesus, what did the Lord say? When you say, I am rich in my own eyes, in my own ways, the Lord will say, you are the wretched one. You are the poor one. You are the blind one. You are the naked one. You are lost. You're lost. My beloved, my beloved, I beg you, I beg you, if the Lord blesses you with money, remember, please remember, say, Lord, it is you who have given me all this. I will never forget what you have done for me. And I will do the things that will make you happy because all I need is your happiness, your approval, and I want you to call me to you when the spirit leaves the body. I'll, I won't take this wealth with me, but you are my wealth, Lord. You are my home. You are my country. You are my citadel. You are my treasure, my everything. Lord, I need you. So this money that you blessed me with, let me see what makes my Lord Jesus happy. Yes, there is someone starving in Africa. There is someone starving in India. There is someone starving in the Philippines. There is someone starving in the Middle East. There is a human being that is in need of help. Lord, you gave me a million. I'll take a portion of that at least one-tenth of it. Tithing, have we forgotten? The minimum, the minimum is tithing. One-tenth of your income is the Lord's, not yours. When we don't give it to Him, we're stealing from Him. But you see, we became frightened. Well, I can't give a hundred dollars out of a thousand. How am I going to survive this week? With a thousand, I'm struggling. With 900, definitely I'm dead. Excuse me. You're doing it your way, not the Lord's. You're doing it your way, not the Lord's. You're doing it your way, not the Lord's. I'll help someone in need. He'll make the Lord happy. He'll make you happy. That million, he'll make it 10. And the 10 will make it 100. Because you see, when the Lord sees that he can trust you, he will give you. But if he sees he can't trust you, you say, why is the Lord delaying? He's not delaying, but he can't trust you. He wants to give. But he is concerned if he gives it, he's going to destroy you. Because you can't handle what he's going to give you. You're going to get a big head. Pride will engulf you. Satan will devour you. Gone. Finito. I'll leave you with this. Our father Abraham, since he is mentioned in this narrative, our father Abraham was extremely rich man in materialistic things. He had money, possessions. He could buy all of Sydney. But you see, he was rich in God. Not as in own way, but God's way. He lived in a tent, not even a house, in a tent. 
an extremely rich, wealthy man of God living in a tent. He used to sit outside of the tent, there was a tree. He used to sit under the shadow, uh, the shade of that tree, in the shade of that tree. And he would say, I will not eat until a stranger walks into my tent and shares the meal with me, I will not eat. One day God said, I'm gonna test my servant Abraham. I'm gonna test him. The first day, God did not send any human being Abraham's way. He slept hungry, did not eat anything. The wife from inside, the usual good old wife, are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? Come inside, eat. You have all the wealth in the world and look at you sitting on the ground under this tree looking like a crazy person. If there was a Liverpool mental hospital at his time, his wife would have admitted him to that mental hospital. He did not eat. The second day, God sent no one. He slept hungry. On the third day, God said, this guy is stubborn. And by the way, the Lord loves you when you are stubborn for him. Ah, yes. When you are persistent for him. Don't pray once and then you hear nothing and then you say, oh, well, the Lord is not interested in me. I'm walking away. No, give the Lord the biggest headache you can ever give. Don't ever let go until he grants you your wish through his will, holy will. But don't ever give up. Give him a hard time. The Lord loves it. He loves it. When you nag, 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 nag. On the third day, God looked at Abraham and said, this guy is serious, man. Oh, he must be from Iraq. <laughs> Middle Eastern people normally are very stubborn people. Their blood boils up quickly and they always stubborn here upstairs. He said, this guy is serious. I was just testing him. This guy's gonna die from starvation. What happened? God himself came down with two angels to greet Abraham. Abraham looked, three men coming towards him. Abraham ran towards the three men, but Abraham bowed before the one in the middle and said, Lord, to the one in the middle. Christ was seen in the Old Testament by our father Abraham. He bowed the bow of worship he said, you're my Lord. And the Holy Bible says, and the Lord is God. The psalmist, and the Lord is God. He says, my Lord, if there is a tiny little drop of mercy in your eyes toward the servant, please have a meal with me. The Lord and the two angels, seen as men, walk into that tent and they eat and share a meal with Abraham. And then the Lord, says to Abraham, next year, like this day, you will have a son and he will be called Isaac, the promised son. Wow. You see, when you are rich in God, what God does for you, God will do the impossible. He was of old age, him and his wife, medically speaking, impossible to bear children. But what is impossible to man is possible to God. God, out of strong faith and love for the Lord, being rich in Christ Jesus, he was given the promised son, Isaac, by the power of the Holy Spirit. You want to see God working in your life? You want to know if God truly is working in your life and present in your life? Be rich in Him and see what He will do for you. He will take you to horizons you would never ever have thought of or dreamt of. He will take you to levels out of definitely out of bounds and out of your reach. He will make you see things the naked eye cannot see. He will take you beyond the beyonds because God is the infinite, almighty, 
creator of everything that is visible and invisible are with the Lord it's full of sores it's full of character defamation dogs barking all the time attacks from everywhere but you know what in the midst of all those source pains all those sharp poisonous words coming towards you there is the glory of God working in your life and at the end you'll end up in the bosom of Abraham Father Son Holy Spirit when you believe in the Holy Trinity and be baptized and stay faithful till the end carry the cross till the end you will be in the bosom of your try on God in the end Amen let's bow our heads and ask the Lord Jesus for forgiveness while we recite this prayer of absolution say Lord make me worthy to come forth and receive you in the true body and the true blood of our Christ Amen our good God and full of mercy our good God and full of mercy whose grace and mercy is poured upon all pour my Lord the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance renew in them your Holy Spirit by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will to confess worship and praise your holy name the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you. May the Almighty God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit, one in nature and one in essence, guide you, protect you, and deliver you from every tribulation, whether it be visible and or invisible. Amen.